So uh, as an SEC guy uh, looking in on this, um, what are your thoughts on it on this move? Just on the face value of of the move, um, good, bad, indifferent. What what's your kind of what's your kind of girls' take? Good for who? Good for the Big Ten, yes. Good for USC and UCLA when it comes to money and football brand, yes. Good for college football, in my estimation, depending on what transpires in the future, most likely, no. And I think yeah. that's the disconnect, yeah. before I let Tony uh, chime in, I think that's a big disconnect that separates college athletics from professional leagues. There is somebody, a commissioner, and by extension committees to oversee the entire sport, to think about the entire sport and what is best for the entire sport when they make decisions, as opposed to we've got a situation where we've got five major conference commissioners and they're going to do what's best for their conference monetarily, first and foremost, and in, with other priorities in mind after that, but there's no one to oversee the entire sport to look out for the entire landscape. No, I, I think that's absolutely correct. And one of the things I was looking for down the road before this happened was in the replacing of Mark Emmert, I was looking for someone to be um, not an NCA president, but more of a commissioner for for everything not you know like we see the conference commissioners and 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 be more of that role that you know dealt less with some of the minutia that mark emmert got himself tied up in and and more big picture forward thinking reimagining kind of things you know i had a i had a conversation off the record with an acc athletic director about uh, seven eight days ago and i asked him because the person uh, the, the the person knows the landscape really well. They know Greg Sankey really well. He says, Greg Sankey, the most powerful person in college sports. He didn't really want to answer that, but he said, Greg Sankey's got the most difficult job in college sports because he's got the most powerful conference, but with such a diverse group of schools, diverse needs and diverse pull. But yet you look at what just happened. Last summer, there was the, you know, Greg Sankey was going to be able to push the SEC model for a playoff through with not really much in the way of stopping them. And then the ACC, Big Ten, and Pac-12 formed this alliance, which really was to serve as a voting block. They would all vote in unison. Um, the alliance lasted a year, and the alliance is now breaking up because a the ACC has got to look out for its best interest now. And, um, you know, the, the different schools in there, it's not even now about looking out for your best interest as a conference. Each school is now looking out for its best interest. We may be seeing the end of the Pac-12. So, you know, the alliance may have slowed Sankey down. Turns out it didn't really stop him. It seems like we just have a domino effect now yeah. with, with, the, with um, Texas and Oklahoma moving to the SEC. And it just seems that, that this has just triggered uh, a frenzy of conference move around. And I think that was some unintended consequences of, of that move. You know, I think what I have seen in the last year of college sports, college football in particular, is nothing but unintended consequences of things. Um, I think the transfer portal wound up with a bunch of unintended consequences. While I favor players being able to, to control their own destiny, there were a bunch of unfortunate um, uh, in unintended consequences because it wasn't managed properly. The transfer portal was came into being right around the same time NIL came into being. Tomorrow's the one-year anniversary of NIL being legal. Um, and so the two are forever intertwined when they shouldn't be, when they really should be two separate things. The unintended consequences of NIL turned into schools having collectives, which I will tell you is I am a thousand percent in favor of NIL. And I absolutely despise the collectives because they don't act in the purity of what NIL was intended to be. Um, so I think we have seen, I, and, and a domino effect, I think is a good way to put it. It, it is a domino effect and 
you know, it's it's hard to keep on top of. I saw someone earlier today say, man, I can't wait until September when we have actual games. And I thought that over the past couple of years, but I've come to the conclusion that nothing is ever going to happen in a vacuum again for the next three to four years until we've reached a new level of, of uh, plateau with wherever everybody's going to wind up. Well, I agree with Mark in, in saying that we need a, a some sort of a, a commissioner over the whole sport. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I think we should vote Mark in for that position. <laughs> Mark, Mark's got my vote, but let me add. Let me add to this. I have talked with college football coaches who are in favor of exactly that. Football having its own commissioner because its interests, its financial acuity and what it means to the schools financially really is different than what the other sports do and how they are run. And I have, I have talked to in the last year, I've talked to no fewer than six college football coaches who advocate for the same thing. A couple of them been willing to throw their name into the, to the hat to be, you know, it's I, only because they don't know Mark. I also think that there has, we need a regulatory uh, committee or something to deal with the issues like you just spoke about, about NIL and the transfer portal and all mm-hmm. that. We need to have some sort of, of a regulation that when it comes to this because – or else this this circus is never going to end. I agree with that. And, and you know, Mark and I have talked about it extensively. We've talked about it over with my group where I've got a whole bunch of riders positioned across the country. Um and I'm fortunate with our group in that at our disposal, we also have a couple of contract lawyers and an NCA compliance officer from a university at our disposal that we bounce stuff off of and go big picture conversation on. So let me let me get to what you're talking about. I agree. I think that they're done. The transfer portal to me had one big problem. There was no in there was no window to it. Uh, there is now. Obviously, you have May 1st to declare to be eligible for the next year uh, for football. There wasn't that to begin with. It was like a 24-7 fast food place where you could just come and go as you wanted. And I had an issue with that. With regards to NIL and the regulation, the NCAA, and specifically Mark Emmert, failed at every possible juncture of that. They had years to see that this was going to happen. But Emmert was guilty of having so much hubris to think that he was going to win at the federal court system that he chose to do nothing. They had a chance to put regulation in place that would have been sweeping. The players would have gotten their money. They would have gotten their benefits. And everybody would have been okay because they were getting enough. Um, But he was convinced he was going to win. And when the Supreme Court, who can't agree on their lunch orders votes nine nothing against you and calls you a cartel then you have lost in a big way so what happens now and i would talk to jay billis about this i want to say about five six weeks ago they're not the 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 nca doesn't worry about lawsuits now they panic about lawsuits they will do they will sit and do nothing as opposed to run the risk of being sued um and so what they've done is they've gone to congress saying we need national help. Well, you know, look, I, I've, I've studied politics all my life. I know it takes forever to get some anything through Congress. Um, and so now you have 28, 29 states who have NIL legislation, which is all well and good, and they're all pretty similar. But then you have 22 that don't, you know, that have nothing. Alabama actually rescinded its state NIL laws because the state legislator just de- legislature decided it was too confining in what we do in our recruiting. So they got rid of the law about two months ago. It's it's there should have been one national plan and Mark Emmert, the pack, I mean the the NCA in general, Mark Emmert specifically is to blame for where we are right now with it. 